Hi, welcome to this demo of IBM Spectrum Protect version 8.1.11. This is going to cover the new copy container to tape and VTL. And this function allows for the copy of either directory or on-premise cloud container storage pools to VTL or tape. And we will rehydrate the data when we write it out to tape so that it can be recovered directly from the tape by the client. And this is different from the previous protect storage pool, type equals local, which would make a copy to tape of container storage pools, but that copy would be deduped when it was written to tape and it would have to first be restored back to the directory container pool. Jonathan Cummings is going to be walking you through the command line options for defining a copy storage pool, defining the storage rule with the action type equals copy, and then defining sub rules. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jonathan. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through how to define some copy storage rules and kind of show how they work and interact with some of the existing functionality of the server. Starting off, if you look, I have two directory container storage pools and I have six nodes, each with a thousand files in them. So client one, two, and three are backing up to directory container one pool and client four, five, and six are backing up to the DIRCONT2 pool. The first step for copy storage rules is to define them. So I'm gonna create a tape pool that I can use as my copy location. I'm doing a define storage pool, copy tape one. It's of the LTO class device class, max scratch to 999, type two type copy, which is a requirement. You need to have a copy pool for the copy storage rules. We can't use primary pools for this. Okay, so I go ahead and define it. The types of storage pools that we can use are tape, VTL would be fine. So in this demonstration, I'm just gonna be using the tape pools. The next step after defining the storage pool would be to define the storage rule. Define storage rule, I'm gonna give it a name of copy underscore dircomp one to copy tape one. The next parameter you need to specify is the storage pool that the copies are going to reside in, copy tape one. We're gonna specify the source storage pools that this data is gonna be copied from. Source pool equals dircont one. This is going to be an action type copy, which is new. Um, before we've had tiering and uh, retention sets, um, but now we're adding the action type copy. So the difference between a tiering storage rule and a copy storage rule is in a tiering storage rule, you're gonna create a copy in a secondary pool, and then you're gonna delete the original copy in the directory container pool. For the copy action type, we're going to create a copy in that secondary storage pool, just like tiering. We're not gonna actually delete the copy that we have in the container pool. So the copies are going to be rehydrated onto tape. So the, they'll have the full file content there and they won't be in chunks like we have in uh, local protect. It's the same as tiering. Tiering also rehydrates the file. Having the rehydrated copy is going to actually give us a, a much quicker restore time if the directory container pool were to become unavailable for some reason. We don't have to pull chunks from the tape and then put them into a container storage pool to be able to restore them. It can just restore straight from tape. After I set my action type of copy, I'm going to set max proc equals four because I have four drives defined in my library. So I want to take advantage of all of those if possible. Okay, so I'll go ahead and press enter and define that. And so we can look and see it's the only storage rule I have defined currently. You can see the storage rule name, the target, the source storage pool, which can also be a list if you if you had multiple pools that you want to do this from. But in this demo, I'm just going to do the one. I have active set to no, so this storage rule is not going to run automatically. It's going to have to be fired off by a start storage rule command. And if you want to, you can set it to active and you can give start times and durations and have this all scheduled. But for this demo, I'm just going to do it all manually to show how it works. So the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show an interaction that these copy rules have with tiering. So I'm going to go ahead and define a, another tape storage pool for tiering. Tier tape one is going to be its name. It's going to use that same device class of LTO class, max scratch set to the same. And I'm not going to specify the pool type because it's going to default to a primary pool, which is what we need for tiering storage rules. So I'll go ahead and define that. I'll define a tiering storage rule for this storage pool. So I'll go define storage rule tier to tier tape one. 
So that's going to be the name of the tiering rule. And then I'm going to set the target pool again, which is going to be tier type one. And I'll set a source pool of deer comp one. My action type is going to be tier by age. You could also do tier by state, but it doesn't matter for this demo. Set tier delay to zero and max proc again to four to utilize all four drives. Okay, so I'll go ahead and define that. If we want to kick off this tiering rule, we can see how it interacts with the copy storage rule. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. If you remember, we have a thousand files in client one, a thousand files in client two, and a thousand files in client three. I'll get to client four, five, and six later on. So I'll go ahead and try to start that tiering storage rule. Start storage rule, tier underscore dirt comp one to tier tape one. Wait equals yes. We'll wait for the command to finish and then I'll see the output in the, in the console here. We got a few warning messages, um, one for each client one, two, and three, stating that the tiering process skips all thousand files um, because copy storage rule operations are pending. So the reason why this is, is that we want to make sure that we have a secondary copy from the container pool before we allow it to be tiered out. The reason for that is that once it's been tiered out to a tape pool, we no longer have the ability to make a copy of it. So this is just going to prevent any files that are trying to be tiered from tiering until we actually make a copy. This is going to be tiering both to tape and cloud. All tiering rules um, follow this restriction. To get around this, we obviously need to create a copy. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off the copy storage rule, start storage rule, copy underscore dirt comp one to copy tape one, wait equals yes. So we'll let that run. Normally you would have a schedule for this. You could have it run at a certain time of day, probably when you don't have a lot of client ingest or replication running at the same time, it should have its own window to operate in for best performance. Okay, the start storage rule command has completed now. You'll see in the message here that it says data was copied from storage pool dirt count one to tape storage pool copy tape one. Copied 3,000 files. So now we can look at query occupancy. For client one, two, and three, we now have files in copy tape one and dirt count one. And they have the same number of files for each because it copied all 1,000 files for the three nodes. So now I'm going to go back to the tiering rule. Since we have made a copy, I'm able to run start storage rule tier. Tier count one, two, tier tape one. Wait equals yes. So now we don't see the warning messages that we saw before. We're actually seeing that it did in fact tier 3000 files. So now query occupancy, momentarily we will see three entries. So we'll see one for copy tape one, tier count one, and tier tape one for each of the three nodes. And in the next couple minutes here, the asynchronous delete process for tiering is going to go through and delete the files from dirt count one. So then we will be left with a copy in copy tape one and in tier tape one, both hydrated. And then we will have no, no dedupe data for these three nodes anymore. Yeah. So as you see now, the deletion process has completed and now we only see copies in two different storage pools for each node and the DIRCONT one entries are completely gone. Okay. So now I'll show off some of the no copy action type and the sub rules that we can specify to get a little more granular. Say you, you don't want to copy of every node from that resides in a certain storage pool. Maybe you only want to copy some higher priority ones. Maybe you have a couple databases that you really need a second copy of. For this example, I'm going to be using clients four, five, and six. Okay, so the first step is going to be to define another storage pool for these copies to reside in, just to keep everything separated. Find storage pool, copy tape two. It's going to be in the same device class. Set my max scratch to 999 and pool type equals copy. Okay, so we've defined the copy tape two storage pool, and now I'll define a no copy storage rule for this. So I'll go to find storage rule, copy dirt two to copy tape two. Target pool is copy tape two, and the source pool is going to be dirt count two. Action type equals no copy. Okay, so we've defined the no copy rule. Just to show that this no copy action type is going to do nothing at this point, start storage rule. And I'll say wait equals yes. So as you can see, it comes back immediately stating that it had no eligible work to process. And that's because all we've told it at this point is there's a relationship between this source pool and this target pool, but we don't want you to do anything yet. No copy. By itself, this is not very useful, but when we define sub rules is when we can get a little more granular. 
gonna go ahead and do that now. Define sub rule, and then I'm gonna take the storage rule name that we just defined, and then I'm gonna specify the sub rule name, client four and five. Then the third parameter is gonna be the list of nodes that this sub rule applies to, client four, client five, and I'm not gonna put client six on there. Action type equals copy. So what this will do is we'll have a parent storage rule the copy dircont2 to copy tape2 that says no copy, and that's going to be applied to every node in the pool. Then when I define this sub rule, I'm going to override that no copy for the clients four and five and say that for these two nodes, I want to actually do a copy. Okay, so I'll go ahead and define that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and kick off the parent storage rule and it doesn't come back right away anymore. It doesn't say it doesn't have any eligible work to process. It's actually going through the sub rule definition and it's going to create two copies, copy for client four and a copy for client five. In the output message, we only have 2000 files copied this time. So I'll run query occupancy. For client four, we have two entries, copy tape two and dircont two. Client five, we have copy tape two and dircont two. And client six, we only have dircont two. And that's because we didn't specify it in the sub rule. So it's defaulting to the parent storage rule, which is action type, no copy. Okay, so now I'll, I'll show what these copies do for us and why we would make a copy. Say we have a disaster in dircont2. Update dircont2, say access equals unavailable. Now we are no longer able to restore from dircont2 because it's been made unavailable. Now that the directory container pool is damaged in some way and unavailable, um, we need to restore um, data from client four. So I'll hop over to another terminal. Do DSMC restore client four. I'm going to restore it to rest client four. Specify, yes, I want subdirectories so I can get all the files restored. Say my node is client four and my password is client four. So I'm going to kick this off. It starts restoring even though dircont2 was made unavailable. So if I hop over into the console window, after dircont2 was updated, we had a restore request come in. Removable volumes are being mounted, and the copies are actually coming from those volumes now, rather than the container pool. So this is an example of why you would want to create a copy storage rule and why you would want this um, extra copy. It gives you access to the data when your directory container pools are unavailable for whatever reason. The benefit of this over using something like local protect is for local protect, we are copying the data out deduplicated. If our container pool were to become unavailable, we need to do a repair operation, which pulls the chunks from the tape back into a directory container pool before a restore could be completed. This gives us immediate access to the data on tape and we can restore directly from there. So in summary, Jonathan has shown you how to set up the new copy container to tape storage rules and sub rules. This new copy container to tape will rehydrate the data before it writes it out to tape, thus allowing for restores to be done directly from the tape. Be sure to check out the other video I have on doing the same functionality inside of the Operations Center. Thank you.